Oh, yeah, this is what it looks like when you resolve all your issues. Uh Mm Uh-huh. Of all the Roy siblings and their many shortcomings, Roman stands out as the most psychologically damaged. Kendall has his addiction problems, Shiv can't trust anyone, Connor has never felt loved. But Roman's issues manifest in uniquely self-destructive ways, as he refuses to actually engage with his emotions, always needing to expel of those bad feelings by channeling them into action, whether it be by joking, stimulating himself, or lashing out. We've seen this archetype before, the spoilt rich kid who abuses his power to hurt others. But Succession's writers add new dimensions to the character by making him a nihilistic comedian who's incapable of taking anything seriously, very much the Joker of Waystar Royko. Strangely enough, Roman is the perfect person to run a tabloid newspaper. He knows what people secretly want, he's obsessed with sex even if he isn't having it, he has no boundaries of what can and can't be said, and seems to take genuine pleasure in hurting others. But why? What has happened in his life that causes him to behave this way? Let's take a deeper look at the sick case of Roman Roy to see if we can understand what he's running away from. Like all of us, Roman is a product of cause and effect. He's a reaction to a certain set of circumstances. Despite being older than Shiv, Roman feels and behaves like the youngest sibling because he's the smallest and least mature. If we look at the family dynamic, he had two older brothers to look up to, Connor, who was mostly ignored and from a different mother, and Kendall, who seems to take everything personally and then internalize it to his detriment. So realizing that neither of those personality types survived particularly well in this household, Roman tried something different. He made himself unignorable by being a prankster, the show-off that never sits still or in the normal upright position. And rather than risking getting his feelings hurt, he discovered it's so much easier to turn everything into a joke, as that way you can turn your own pain into pleasure. He was going to make a horrible joke, so I'm preempting. Okay, okay. But as a consequence of this over-the-top persona, his father had to discipline him more, and unlike his brothers, Logan was physically abusive to Roman, even beating him in public locations, like at a restaurant in front of other guests. Dad, you beat Roman with a fucking slipper and Gestalt till he cried for ordering lobster, remember? (laughs) The shame of being humiliated and hurt in public like this causes Roman to have no clear boundaries with other people. Whatever you're not supposed to say or do, he'll automatically trespass into that space, making his superpower an inability to feel discomfort or shame where others normally would. But Roman wasn't just abused by his father, Throughout the first two seasons, we see that he's the punching bag of the entire family, physically dominated by his older brothers and even his younger sister, all of whom subconsciously treat him like he's the runt of the pack. So given he's at a physical disadvantage, he has a choice. Play the victim and try to guilt the others out of bullying him, or mask his vulnerability, turn everything into a joke, and trade verbal blows. As in a battle of wits, he's never outmatched. Just like Ewan quoted in the Thanksgiving episode, life is nothing but a competition to be the criminal rather than the victim. So it makes sense that once Roman grows up, he enjoys the benefits of being from such a wealthy family as it enables him to flex his power over those with less influence than him. Whether it be employees, waitstaff, Greg, he'll verbally humiliate anyone who happens to be in his opportunistic crosshairs. Because by experiencing how fun it can be to bully others, it allows him to make psychological peace with why his family did it to him. Roman wouldn't act this way unless he was being bullied himself, as we see this cause and effect in action time and time again. In season 1, when Logan berates and dismisses him for not being tough enough, he walks outside and punches Greg in the arm to make himself feel better. In season 2, when Logan informs him Kendall is back in the fold and tells him to F off, he verbally abuses the first employee he passes just for looking at him. Or in season 4, when Jerry threatens to release the many photos of his junk that he sent her, knowing he's powerless in this dynamic inspires him to run over to Connor and try to bully him into dropping out of the presidential race, stating that everyone in the room thinks he's a joke. 
So rather than sitting with his feelings and recognising that he fears public humiliation, he inflicts that same feeling on someone else, so his pain is shared, and therefore less isolating. But this whole persona is a facade, a defence mechanism against feeling anything real. You're not a real person. You know that? You're not a real person. You're not real. Despite the strong front he projects, Roman is deeply insecure. If he were as confident in his own abilities as he pretends, he'd be able to be calm and steady and take himself seriously so that others could too. But instead we see this insecurity manifest in his constant fidgeting. He's always biting his nails, pulling his ears, or scratching his hair, showing us the little boy who's scared to make a mistake bubbling to the surface. Roman, you're a moron. His deepest fear is that he'll be exposed as the screw-up of the family, as that would only validate that he deserved to be dominated and picked on as a child. The problem is that whenever he's given the opportunity to prove himself, he falls short, further cementing how dependent he is on his father and how incapable he is of surviving or thriving without him. We see a clear example of this when he's enrolled in the management training program and has to experience what life would be like if he wasn't born into such privilege. And the moment the students are all asked to come up with original ideas for the company, Roman's automatic reaction is panic and dismissal. What if we fuck it? What if I can't think of anything? I don't have anything prepared. Do you know about this? As this exercise might accidentally reveal that he's unable to compete with normal people without his father's influence presiding over all. While Kendall and Shiv often look to betray and topple their father's power, Roman has a clearer respect for it and can't truly stand up to him, as he views his dad as an unstoppable winning machine that can never be defeated. He's not infallible, Rome. No, sure, I just don't think he ever fails or ever will. In many ways, this is an ideal outcome for Logan, as by physically disciplining Roman as a child, he's made him far easier to manipulate as an adult. As no matter what tact Roman takes, it's always designed to appease his father. He'll either act like the court jester to entertain him, or he'll pitch the dirtiest tactic possible to give the impression he's actually the toughest. But all of this is just overcompensation, as Roman is never as certain as he tries to come across. We see this when he competes against Kendall for his father's approval, and suggests that they gut Voltaire. And once Logan sides with Roman, he's happy in the moment, but then quickly becomes plagued with self-doubt, as he's never actually had anyone take his advice seriously before, and his decisions have a track record of blowing up in his face. But unlike his siblings, the strangest aspect of Roman Roy is his sex life. For someone that overcompensates by graphically referencing sex as often as possible, Roman is hiding the fact that he has little to no interest in a regular romantic relationship. He always needs something to be off about these dynamics for him to remain interested. Even the way he selected Tabitha, he was looking at her with lust from afar, knowing she was about to hook up with Tom, thus making her unattainable. And then despite it crossing every line, and having the freedom to choose virtually anyone else, he then invites her along to Shiv and Tom's wedding as his date, parading her around like a sick badge of honour. However, although Tabitha is promiscuous, Roman never actually sleeps with her, as he wants his dynamic with her to be different than any other man she's ever dated. Dating the most promiscuous option, and keeping the relationship celibate, is classic Roman Roy, it always has to be weird or wrong or upside down, in some way. It's only when she openly reveals that they don't have sex at the Pierce's dinner party, describing their relationship as eunuch besties, that Roman feels so ashamed of his current celibacy that he tries to correct it by initiating sex with her. But try as he might, he just can't have a normal sexual experience needing Tabitha to pretend she's a dead body for him to be turned on, which, unsurprisingly, turns her off completely. You'll be fine. Just be brave, okay? Yes, mommy. It's actually in Jerry that Roman finds what he's looking for, as she's both forbidden and knows how to play along in just the right way to make him feel like he's being inappropriate and needs to be punished. But why? Why is Jerry the target of his affection and why is humiliation his kink? 
Firstly, we need to reinvestigate Roman's traumatizing childhood. At Tom's bachelor party, when Roman recollects the events of his youth, it appears that there isn't a clear story to hold on to. Roman remembers being locked in a cage and being forced to eat dog food with a leash. But Connor and Kendall remember it as he loved playing dog pound and it was a bowl of chocolate cake, not real dog food. Roman remembers wetting the bed and being sent to military school, but Connor remembers it as Roman asked Logan to go. So the events that shaped Roman's most painful memories are all things he may have desired himself. Were these events just painful or were they secretly enjoyable? Has he become so accustomed to being dominated and hurt, using humour to mask pain with pleasure, that certain lines have got twisted and now he can't be satisfied without feeling like he's also being punished? In Italy, Shiv consistently mocks Roman for having an Oedipus complex, quipping, how romantic would it be if you could marry mommy on her wedding day? Caroline has always been a cold and distant mother. She never wanted children and was always far more interested in herself. But with Roman specifically, she neglected her most basic duties as a mother by never intervening to stop Logan from harming her youngest son. So you can, um, protect me? Well, I can try. So it's natural that Roman would be drawn to the first mother figure in his life that he feels will protect him. As in this nepotistic family business, Jerry is the one woman that Logan truly trusts with his most prized possession, his company. So just like a child craves their mother, Roman wants to be around Jerry all the time at work to make up for the time he never got from Caroline at home. He wants her to punish and dismiss him for his naughty behavior, just like when he was a child but still be there to maternally guide him to the top job and essentially choose him to be in charge over his father, thus completing his eatable fantasy. This is why when Logan betrays the children by selling his company, Roman's first instinct is to run to Jerry for help, expecting her to take him in her arms and find a way to protect him. But like always, his emotional needs come second to the priorities of the business, and he never finds the love or safety he's been searching for. Because Roman never seeks anything healthy or attainable, he always needs it to be weird or off or impossible, so that when it inevitably fails, he has a ready-made excuse for why it didn't work out. Because failing at something impossible is expected, but failing at something basic is exposing. So he'd rather treat everything like a joke than discover no one takes him seriously. He'd rather look like he's not even trying to have a normal relationship than not be able to sustain one. And he'd rather pretend he has no boundaries than let anyone know they've hurt him. And that concludes the sick case of Roman Roy, the boy who built an entire persona around his fear of failure. Well, if you've made it this far, firstly, thank you for watching, but if you could now give the video a like, possibly even leave a comment and click on that subscribe button, it will encourage that mysterious algorithm to do its thing. And if you want to support the channel personally, you can check out my Patreon.